Welcome back to Daddy Guy's Kitchen. I'm Clark Nesselroot, and today I wanted to welcome you in as I prepare a wonderful uh, carrot cake with fluffy cream cheese frosting. This is a recipe that I picked up in Food & Wine magazine back in like 2006, and I've probably made this carrot cake now 15 or 20 times, and every time I do, it just brings such huge delight to whomever I get to share it with. And tonight I'm actually making it for my wife's birthday, which happens to fall in November, and there's something about the uh, rich, earthy, but still super sweet flavor of carrots on a wonderful fall celebratory evening that is just perfect. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. I'm starting with a cup of pecans, which I'm going to get onto a baking sheet, just toss them out like so, and into my oven, which is preheated to 325, and I'm going to let these toast for about eight minutes. And as toasted pecans always are, they're fragrant and steaming and just quite perfect. The pressure is now off. There's nothing in the oven. We've got those pecans out. We've got our pans greased up and ready to go. It's time to get serious about what's going to make this carrot cake what it is. And those are our beautiful carrots. Got these gorgeous large carrots. I always have carrots in the fridge. I buy big bags of them. They last forever. They're good for baby food. We just keep them around. But this recipe calls for a pound of carrots. I don't have a scale in my kitchen and I can never really, I'm not that good at figuring out what a pound is just by feeling something. So even if I have carrots in the house, I always buy carrots, especially for carrot cake, because that way they're super fresh, obviously, too, as a benefit of this. And I can use the scale at the grocery store, the market, to make sure that what I'm putting in this baking recipe is is exactly a pound. Usually if I'm doing a carrot cake I'll just buy a pound of shredded carrots. That thought escaped me this time. It's a great time-saving daddy guy tip for next time. But for now, I'm going to be using yield food processor, which I have to be honest, is actually a better approach because you're going to get much more of a, a slivered shredded carrot than a really perfect kind of matchstick carrot. And I think that for the purposes of baking down into a cake batter, that's actually preferable. But the good, even better news is I really enjoy shredding things in my food processors. There's something very validating about that. So I hope you enjoy this as much as I'm about to. Aha! Positively majestic here in Daddy Guy's kitchen. I'm so sad Schmoo is missing this. He would love it. All right. So I've got a very large bowl here. I'm going to grab a whisk. And I'm just going to begin assembling the dry ingredients of this cake batter. So I'm going to begin with two cups of flour. And I'm going to take the time to grab something to level off my cup. I just want to be as precise as I can while I can. With baking, you don't want to take these chances. You just never know. It is a science, moreover the art of cooking. Moving on from our flour, I'm going to grab my teaspoon and go ahead with two teaspoons of baking soda and two teaspoons of baking powder. I love this recipe because um, if I get the baking powder and the baking soda confused, it's both two teaspoons, no harm, no foul, recipes that have different quantities of these two guys. I always find myself really double and triple checking, but that's just me. Uh, one teaspoon of cinnamon. I have this wonderful, just opened it, um, bottle of Ceylon cinnamon, and boy, it just smells wonderful. I'm not gonna be shy about putting a little extra in there. A teaspoon of salt. Only imagine how that salt's gonna bring out the flavor of those carrots. It's gonna be delicious. And that covers it for our dry ingredients. I'm gonna whisk this together, make sure I've got it nice and uniformly covered. I'm gonna set this aside for one moment to pay a little attention to my wet ingredients. I have already pre-measured a cup of vegetable oil. To that, I'm gonna add a half cup of buttermilk and to save myself a different measuring cup or a different dish to measure this out, I'm just gonna fill this now to a cup and a half. That way I'll know I've added a half cup of buttermilk. I've got one and a half teaspoons of the good stuff, the pure vanilla extract, not that fake upsetting stuff. One and a half teaspoons. So now we get to really have some fun with this recipe. It's time to up the ante on the hardware we're using here got my stand mixer. My stand mixer has a little bit of a hitch in its get along. It needs a little bit of work to firm up the neck here. So it can be a bit of a, a bumpy ride with a daddy guy's stand mixer, but I think we're going to make it. So I'm just going to go ahead and crack four eggs right into my stand mixer and two cups of sugar. 
I'm using my favorite organic cane sugar here. And you'll notice it isn't that sort of bright bleached white. It's the same stuff, but it's not nearly as processed. And two cups, they were both a little scant, so I'm gonna top it off here with a little bit more sugar. And now I can set it and forget it to the extent my um, busted KitchenAid will enable me to do so. I'm gonna lock this in and let's see how we do. She's getting the job done. I'm gonna help out a little bit here. We're gonna beat this on high for five minutes until the sugar and eggs are fluffy, frothy, and most importantly, a really rich, beautiful, pale yellow. About five minutes have gone by. Um, our eggs and sugar have fluffed up. They're a beautiful, very pale yellow, nice and fluffy. And I'm gonna slowly begin adding our liquid ingredients, our oil and our vanilla extract and our buttermilk. I'm just gonna begin adding my dry ingredients one spatula at a time through the chute. Bringing this down to low, I'm just gonna stop for one second and use that same spatula to scrape my bowl. So a quick stir off the mixer, bringing up a good bit of flour and dry stuff from the bottom, validating the need to do this. Mm. Oh, we're definitely heading in a good direction, folks. So I've now got our batter back up on just a low speed because we're gonna slowly begin mixing in our pecans. When it comes to pecans, you want to make sure you get every last morsel in the batter. Just adding in my whole pound of beautiful shredded carrots. I'm now completely thrilled that I shredded them here in my own home. Their texture is just wonderful. They're really going to melt down into the batter beautifully. I have the oven set on 335 and we're coming in Actually, almost true to temp, I'm very impressed. Sometimes my oven is right on, other times it's 50 to 75 degrees off, go figure. So I'm actually gonna turn my oven down to a true temp at 325. Oh, look at this batter. And I'm just gonna bring my prepared pans over here one at a time. And our, actually I'm gonna bring them two at a time, both at once as it were, because I wanna try to get this as even a pour as possible and I kind of need them here next to each other to see how I'm doing on that pursuit. And these are looking pretty even, so I'm gonna sort of gather up our last bits here, eyeball it into half, and do half here and half there. I really wanna be ginger and careful with these pans over the next few minutes because there's a good bit of natural air that has worked into this batter through the whipping process in our stand mixer. And if I jostle these or drop them or shake them, um, it's gonna sort of tap that air out and it's gonna make for a denser cake and we want a light fluffy cake. And I'm so pleased just in time to get these cakes into the oven. My favorite little co-star here is up from his nap wondering where his bottle is. Carrot cake for mommy's birthday. I'm gonna get this boy his lunch and get these cakes into the oven. They are ready now. Oven is good to go at 325. I'm gonna put these in for 55 minutes to an hour. I'll start setting timers about 45 minutes in so I can keep an eye on these. We want them to be springy and spongy in the middle. Certainly not overcooked. <laughs> wow, that was some pretty great timing, I have to say. Our timer has clearly just gone off. I took a quick sneak peek at our carrot cake, which fortunately is just in a perfect state to come right on out. I took a toothpick a few minutes ago and tested this came out perfectly clean. This is just looking exactly as it's supposed to. I've grabbed my handy dandy wire rack, which I'm just going to use to cool these cakes still in their pan. This is gonna make sure that, uh, you know, you can build up heat from the pan between the pan and the counter, and it keeps things hotter longer and can lead to a soggy bottomed cake. It's the last thing we want. So we cool things on a rack so that air can pass under the pans and you get a uniform cooling of the cake. We're gonna let these cool for about 30 minutes and then we'll go ahead and turn them out of their pans get the parchment paper off the bottom and let them cool all the way down to a nice cool room temperature so we can frost them without the risk of breaking things apart or turning things into, into cake dust. So, mm, extra specialers for mama's birthday. Mommy's birthday is now. It is this day of today. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. We have all come to say. <laughs> uh, plenty of time has passed. My cakes are now nice and cool. I'm gonna take a quick moment to turn these cakes out of their pans to make sure the bottom portion of the cake doesn't become soggy in there. And so this usually, if prepared as we did, 
goes pretty well. And yes, there we go. A perfect turnout. Um, our two beautiful carrot cake layers beautiful. ready to go. Beautiful. And I can, you know, I'm just going to leave the parchment on for the time being. Let this be a little bit protected. Um, but now we're out of the pan. We're not going to become soggy. And we're going to let these just cool as much as they'd like. But first and foremost, we've got to make the frosting. So now I've been uh, letting this cream cheese and butter soften the better part of the day. And I've had it uh, over by the stove so that it even had the benefit of a little extra warmth. And I'm just going to put two whole eight ounce packages of cream cheese right into the bowl of my mixer. And then two sticks of butter also softened in with the cream cheese. Perfect. Turning this up to high, I'm just going to beat the butter and the cream cheese together for about five minutes until they're super smooth, light, and fluffy. Okay, I'd be willing to venture that this is gone for about uh, five minutes, looking really just light and fluffy and beautiful in here. Our butter and our cream cheese whipping together. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a tablespoon of the good stuff, pure vanilla extract. I'm gonna add two cups of powdered sugar right into this. I've got my dust guard here so I can pour this in pretty quickly on high speed and still be okay. And one more cup down the chute, literally. I'm gonna take a quick break to scrape down our bowl. Oh wow, this frosting is just super light and fluffy. I'm gonna give it one scrape, delicious, but I'm just gonna give it one more pass with the mixer really quickly. And that's the whole story told on our wonderful fluffy cream cheese frosting for our carrot birthday cake, which luckily I have a birthday girl right here. Come on in the kitchen, mommy gal. Oh. What do you think? I think it's phenomenal. You think it'll do? Oh yeah. All right. So the moment has arrived. This is the apotheosis of our creative exploration into this birthday extravaganza preparation. We are ready to frost the birthday cake. Such an exciting moment. I've got my first layer of cake um, sort of right side up on my lined cake stand. And I'm going to put, just eyeballing this, I want about a cup of frosting to make up my middle layer. So I'm just doling, doling that out and then spreading it out evenly to the edges. I would say that is just about perfect. And I'm now going to take our second layer and I'm actually going to keep it in its inverted position, make sure that the top of our cake is as flat as possible. And we achieve that by flipping over so the bottom side of the top layer of cake is what actually makes the top of our cake. And now it's time to really go for the glory. Just dump our remaining frosting, or you know, a good, a good portion of it. Save a little for emergencies, for future tasting. Gonna dump the frosting here onto our cake. We've let this cool nicely. If we had done this too soon, and it's even now it's frosting a cake is precarious stuff. If we'd done this too soon, we would have certainly, um, the result would have been the sort of breaking down of our cake. It would have turned into crumbs but beneath the frosting. This is pretty well cool to room temperature and because of that we're going to have a much easier time beginning to do the slow careful work required to frost our birthday cake here. Just slowly allowing globs of the frosting to drip down the sides and using your spatula to work the frosting around. Make sure you're at a moment in your life, on your path, in your home. <laughs> that you're really able to, you know, this, this is going to take about 10 minutes of focused effort. This is not a rush job, which is why we're doing it nice and early in the evening. All right, and we have reached that wonderful moment where the vast majority of our cake is now white. We're just going to carefully explore all sides and angles to make sure that we're not inadvertently missing a giant chunk somewhere. And I do believe we've done it. In record time, I think this is just about five minutes of focused effort, not even ten. And now that we're fully covered, I'm just going to go around the edge here. I'm doing a little wave movement with my spatula, create a little uniformity. 
All right, there we have it, our fully frosted birthday cake. I'm gonna go put this in the refrigerator and let this cool up. I'll take it out about an hour before we're ready to eat it, but until then, we're gonna let it kind of come together, let that cream cheese and butter set back up a little bit, and before we serve it, we'll pluck these pieces of paper out to have a perfectly clean cake stand ready to present to our guests. Mm. All right, for those of you that have been following the storyline of our homemade, um, toasted pecan infused homemade carrot cake with fluffed cream cheese frosting it's heading out of the kitchen we did it thank you for sticking with me richard my best man keep me around for a lifetime look at this wonderful